everyone, and welcome to the latest Scots Wehey podcast. And I'm so pleased to be joined by writer Leila Abulela to talk about her latest novel, River Spirit. Hello, Leila. Hello, hello. So can you talk about River Spirit and why you wanted to tell these stories? Well, I I grew up with the, the stories. I was I was living, of course, I grew up in Khartoum, Sudan, and um so very clear with like within walking distance was the palace where uh, General Gordon was um you know holding on to Khartoum uh, while the revolutionaries were trying were putting Khartoum under siege and then he was um he was killed so i kind of grew up with the story and i didn't know that gordon was scottish until yeah. I came to 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 Aberdeen, and it and this it clicked, and I saw a statue of him in um, in school hill. There's a statue of him in here in here in in, in Aberdeen. So it, it kind of like having the bringing the two countries together is something that I want to do now that I've lived in Scotland for so many years. So just to give a bit of background, this was in the late 19th century. Can you, if you could talk a bit about when it was and and where it was, would be great. Yeah, it's that's that's Sudan in uh, in the eighteen eighties, eighteen seventies, eighteen eighties. It was ruled at the time by the Ottoman. It was a part of the Ottoman uh, Empire, and then, uh, but but the Sudanese were taxed very heavily, so they, uh, they there was a lot of grievance against the rulers, and so they rose in revolt. They rallied around a man who um, his name was Muhammad um, Ahmad um, al-Mahdi, and he said that he was the, the promised Mahdi, the promised uh, savior that is um, told in the, in, the, in, in the Islamic hadith, in the, in, in the, in the, in the traditions of the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so he, uh, uh, people believed him. He, he was a, a, a religious person. He was a good person. They trusted him. They believed him. And he managed to defeat the, the government one, uh, one after the other. And so the, the government uh, then hired Gordon, Charles Gordon, who was a British army officer. And uh, they said to him, you've got experience in Sudan. You've got experience in China. He was a, a hero. And you can, um, you know, save uh, Sudan. You could do something about this. And he went, but he couldn't. He, you know, despite his uh, uh, his experience, he uh, the Khartoum was uh, was put under siege, and he remained in the palace. And um, you know, the, 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 eventually, the whole of Sudan uh, fell, and it became like an island of independence in this great big um ocean of uh, ottoman empires and european um, empires and 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 slowly slowly you know britain took egypt and 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 um parts of africa and you know the italians took uh, um ethiopia and so there was a lot of european interest in africa at the time but the sudanese managed to remain kind of independent uh for a long stretch of of 14 uh years so the novel kind of goes over this uh, history but tries to set to tell it very much from a sudanese point of of view yeah because the way that you tell it is through different individual characters who aren't on the front line necessarily you know they it's the, this war and, and, and uh, conflict is going on all around them and their lives are just kind of dealing with often very every day, often not very every day, often life changing things. Is, why did you want to tell the story that way? Well, it seemed that, that that's the best way to, you know, fiction to, to kind of illuminate this time and and uh and to focus on ordinary people and to tell it from their point of view and i like the idea of i didn't want to change the historical facts i just wanted to kind of like go back in time and and be there and kind of share these events with with with, with the characters so that's how i approached it and how difficult is it writing historical fiction to get that balance between historical events and and the fictional side of things is that the best way to do it to create characters rather than put words in the mouth of real inverted commas characters i think so i think because real characters then you know the reader is 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 drawn to them i'm drawn to them as as as, as a writer and then the reader is 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 drawn uh, into them and um but the story has been said so many times from the point of view of the big big characters there was a film 
in the 1960s called Khartoum, in which Charlton Heston played Gordon, and they had the Laurence Olivier in blackface playing the the Mahdi. So this kind this this story was was told, and there was another film called The Four Feathers, and there were many books written about it from that point of view. And I read these books as, as well. Uh, but then um, coming to write it, I thought, no, I need to, you know, go behind all of that and kind of dig deep and, and find the more, um, a better way of, of telling the story from the local point of view and and and, uh, um, and the lives of ordinary people, especially the women. I was interested in that as well. So were you taught this history at school? Was this something that you kind of knew about from a young age? Yeah, I was taught this history at school and then I went to university and I was taught it again. So I, I kind of knew it, you know, you kind of know it, it's 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 there if you've heard it so many times, as you would know Mary Queen of Scots, for example. Mm -hmm. But 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 taking the decision to write about it, taking the decision to to research it was a was was something completely different and fascinating, really. It was really very, very interesting to do that. Yeah. I was going to ask about your research, um, how much you had to do but also did you discover new things or did it change some of the stories that you'd been taught previously well i went to durham the university of durham and they have the sudan archives and there i found a bill of sale for a, for a, a woman called zamzam and it was just fascinating to hold this bill of sale and it's dated with these dates and um and just to know that this took place and that there was slavery. I mean, I knew about it kind of like theoretically, but actually to come across it in, in that way. So this inspired the character of Zamzam in the story and inspired this young girl. And I followed her life since she was a child in her village in South Sudan and how she came to be uh, enslaved and came to be, uh, you know, uh, sold from one person to, to, to another. So that that was part of the research that was um, that was interesting uh, for me. Yeah, Because I think... I mean, ignorantly, a lot of people don't think about maybe about slavery at that time within cultures and countries. You know, it's something that was maybe people were taken from their homes, but actually a lot was going on within countries as well. Yeah, well, this is what happened that after, uh, you know, Britain and America gorged themselves with the, with the transatlantic slavery, they kind of turned around and attacked the Ottoman Empire for practicing slavery. And so this was one of this was the reason that Gordon went to Sudan in order to 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 suppress uh, slavery. So the uh, public opinion was very much against slavery at that time. So we've reached the end of the 19th century. Yeah. So um, uh, you know British public op opinion was 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 against slavery, uh, in, uh, and 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 uh, it became a reason to 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 spread the empire because they were spreading these enlightened views. Mm. of uh, anti-slavery uh, views and so uh, that became part of how they got people on on board you know you're you're this is what we're fighting for this is what why we need to uh expand and and and, and so on so gordon was was part of that his aim was to suppress the slave trade in um in this area which was the, the east african uh route so yeah. sudan was a as a kind of a gateway in which uh, slaves were taken from the south onto Egypt and onto Turkey, and this is where they went. But it's different. The the the, the slavery practiced in East Africa um, was very different from the the West Coast slavery. Mm -hmm. uh, the the West Coast slavery, as we know about it, from the plantation culture and from the, is associated with capitalism. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 the the Africans were enslaved in order to produce capital, in order to grow capital. This wasn't the case with the East African slavery. The women were taken as for domestic slaves and the men were taken into the army. Mm -hmm. So there was no there, there was no plantation culture. There was no uh, there wasn't really capitalism involved. It was more of a service kind of of um, of need. And also the assimilation was quicker. Many of the women who 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 became domestic um, uh, servants in these houses became part of the family. Their children were automatically considered free. Uh, the same with the men who went into the army; they kind of rose and they became free. And and so there, it's, 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 it takes it takes a different uh, shape uh, than 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 the than the transatlantic uh, slavery. Yeah. It's interesting hearing you talking about that because I. 
there's a lot of clashes of culture in the book, and sometimes that comes through misunderstanding. Like you've got this interesting relationship between a uh, Robert the painter and Zamzam, and he feels I can paint you. That's absolutely, f and whereas her reaction is absolutely not, you know, and that kind of clash between you talk about capitalism, and it made me think of her myself the way that she says, why do you need all these things, all these things in your house around you? And you know, I'm surrounded by books and things. And you think, yeah, that is, it's interesting. That seems like it was very important to either have trophies, not even trophies of places you've been, but just reminders of places you've been. Whereas Zamzam it very much was, she wants to more in contact with what's happening at the moment and what's happening around her and in her, uh, and in the wild and in, in country as well. Yeah, yeah. I wanted Robert to be a, a kind of an average, a young average Scottish uh, man at the time who was attracted to the empire because uh, so many uh, young Scottish men played a part in the empire. They were attracted to go because they're, they faced prejudice here in, the, in, in Britain because uh, things were harder for them. Uh, to, to, it was hard for them to progress in Britain. And so going to the colonies became a, a wonderful opportunity for them. And they could then advance in their the career. They could, you know, leapfrog and they could come up and, you know, return with a higher sort of uh, status. And um, so he he's like that as well. You know, he's there. So he wants to have all these things, the the the, the ivory uh, sort of um, th the thing. And he has all these things at home and and he's painting and he's sending his paintings back home and and he's he's trying to better himself. And in, in these conservative societies, um, uh, to have access to a woman in order to paint her yeah. uh, was is very difficult. There's no um, you know models as such. So these men resorted to enslaving women. Again, he didn't want to do that. It, he, it's not it's not something that he believed in. But he felt he had to do that in order to find someone who would uh, would uh, he could paint a subject that he could uh, paint. And and so she, uh, but she turned out to be a lot harder to <laughs> to convince. <laughs> Absolutely, it's a tremendous tempestuous uh, relationship. <laughs> and is he based on any real? Because we should say that there was a lot of um, painters who kind of made that. I'm thinking about the first wave of Glasgow boys, and they painted overseas. You know, whether it was in the Far East or whether it was in uh, uh, other places as well. That's how they made their reputation. So, is he based on a particular painter? Well, I kind of based him around David Roberts, who, uh, but but David Roberts was more in the 18th century, so right. for, further back. And David Roberts never went to Sudan. He he just he went to Egypt, and then he went to the Holy Land. He painted Jerusalem, and and he painted all these beautiful, uh, you know, buildings. Um, he also came from a very poor background, and he used to he started off as uh, painting uh, the background of theaters. Uh, that's how he he got into. All uh, right. Yeah, he was doing in Glasgow. He was he was doing that the the, the theaters, and then he kind of um, um, you know did more and more. And then he went away, and he came uh, he came back. But if you see his his paintings now, you'd recognize them straight away because they're just like the, what we feel as the Orient the Orient. Yeah. I mean, he yeah. just gave us that the big he he was. He used to draw everything, the buildings huge and the people very small, very dis disproportionate. You know, he'd have these huge uh, buildings. But some of the paintings he did were of w women and they yeah. were really life-size uh, women. Uh, but his apparently his daughter censored them, censored a lot of these paintings after he died because she was prudish and she didn't want, uh, you know, <laughs> to, 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 she was sort of horrified about that. And that kind of influenced me as well. And... There's, as I say, there's a lot of clashes in culture in the book, but there is in your writing as well. You've tended to bring uh, both cultures, both your Sudanese background and also where you are now in Scotland, together in a lot of your books. Is that important to you? It feels important to me. It feels like I'm, 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 I've lived. I have both countries now. I've lived in both countries, and um, I feel uh, I'm not only belonging to one of them I, I i i feel that both of them are, are kind of mine now and i want to 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 kind of explore the the shared history and and all that because i i find it fascinating and um it's not something that we that you know people talk about or know about a lot but it's it's there it, it has happened yeah. 
Yeah, I think there's so many of what I thought when I was reading the book was there must be so many of these untold stories where it's not just about um, one country's history. It's kind of, you know, it spreads out and, and influences many others as well. It does. It does. It does. It does. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So when you're writing such a novel, do you ever consider any parallels with what's happening today or even lessons for today? Or is that really that's up to the reader to read into it? What would you say? I, I think the reader would would read into it. But but because the history repeats itself, you will always find an echo. There will always be an, an, an echo coming up. So I think that this um, um, this idea of people um rebe rebelling against uh, oppression is something that comes up in history time time and again and and many of these movements start off as revolutionary they start off as wanting uh, idealistic in a way but then they turn violent they they can turn very violent and we have, we've kind of we see this yeah. um in 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 all these you know the the revolutions that start off in a kind of a very good uh, spirit and then they 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 end up turning uh, violent and turning kind of against themselves yeah yeah and to go back to the characters, you mentioned the the Maddie, and I didn't realize he'd been played by Alonso Olivia in a film. That's, uh, <laughs> but what I would say is he is charismatic enough on the page that you can believe that people followed him, and you oh, can yeah. also believe that people were against him. Yeah, yeah, people followed him because he he managed to succeed in these battles. I mean, he had this his this limited number of men with. Uh, farmers they only had hoes they only had sticks daggers and then they were able to beat uh you know um uh, groups of soldiers who were armed to the teeth so this kind of like made people think oh he's got magical properties he's yeah. got you know miracles he's performing miracles oh he's bulletproof oh you know so so this grew the the, the rumors and the um and uh you know the the charisma surrounding him grew and grew and and and, and it affected people and it affected um how they're wanting to believe in him and then of course as the movement grows people then start to join in because well everybody's joined in yeah. or uh, so they don't really believe in him but they're joining in because you know everybody else is joining him and then he turned a, a threat he then became he forced himself on on the tribes you have to follow me or else i will fight you yeah so it became then uh there was a lot of violence in, inflicted on on the people who were against him yeah, it's that kind of if you if you're not for us, you're against us, and then for we're gonna, yes. we're going to come for you. And so this was a a, a real historical figure, yeah. Yes. And uh, you're saying, but Gordon, tell us a little bit about Gordon, because I think a lot of people won't know about this character too much. He was kind of was he sent by the British or was he employed uh, to look after the Ottoman Empire? What was how did it work? Well, Britain had that. Britain had that at that time already kind of entered Egypt, already okay. was influenced Egypt, even though the Sultan was there of yeah. Egypt. So the Sultan hired uh, Gordon. So if you can see even in the in the paintings of Gordon and the photographs of Gordon, he's wearing the the fez that the that the Ottomans wear because he was an employee. So he was, he was yeah. getting an employee of the of the Ottomans, but he was getting his orders from London. So it was a kind of a situation where he's getting paid by the the Tur the Turkish Ottomans, but he's he's definitely Britain's man on the ground and they're telling him what to do. And, 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 and his loyalty is to the, is to the British empire. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Queen Victoria sends an army to rescue him once things go very bad with, with, with the siege in, in, in Khartoum. Um, so there was, the, the, it, it just shows how uh, also um we we also tend to think of 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 Britain invading countries as in just just strolling in with an army, but no, there's a lot of stuff going on before. There's a lot of dip diplomatic the yeah. things. There's a lot of easing their way in and and gaining more and more influence before the final uh, uh, sort of uh, co conquest. Let, let, let's say so. He was he was part of of that, and and when he died, it was like a trauma for Victorian Britain. Right. Uh, you know the papers wrote about it. The Queen Queen Victoria cried, and 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 for over 
14 years, they built up an, uh, the need to revenge Gordon. And a lot of young men were feeling, oh, you know, we need to go and avenge uh, Gordon. And this led then to the invasion of, of Sudan in, in, um, in 1889. And then Sudan became part of, of, uh, of the British uh, Empire officially. Yeah. Uh, and are those the only two real characters? Are the rest creations? Uh, the rest are yeah. The rest are more, more, more or less creations. Yeah, well, they might refer to somebody who was who was real, but the re all the characters are 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 fictional. Yeah. And so, how do you uh, approach that? Say, for instance, the central character of Zamzam, Zam, who originally is named Akani, yes. uh, and a I mean, this is a wonderful, I mean, really memorable creation. I just I'm, I was quite sad to leave her, you know. Oh, that's you know. nice. But you know how. How did she emerge? How did you develop a character like that when you're doing it from, from scratch? Do you take little bits? You said you found her name on a bill of sale. Was that the kind of spark? This was the spark, the bill of sale. And then I imagined her in this as a little girl, you know, playing in the river. And, and then slowly, slowly, she, she kind of built up slowly, slowly. So that was the, the imagination part of it. Um, and I didn't do my research all at one go. Right. Uh, so I would I would write and then do a little research. I would write and do a little bit of research. So there was a kind of a um, so that the creative part could 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 keep could keep going for me. But um, it was great fun. <laughs> you you really capture the kind of sights sounds tastes and heat. I thought the, there was real heat coming off the novel. Is that from your own memories of growing up in Sudan? And do those memories become stronger over time and maybe even over distance? They are from my from from my memories and um and and kind of like oh it become the, the writing is also a kind of a like um a, a putting the pieces together. So I'm imagining, to so say I'm imagining a character and I'm I'm thinking, oh, this date, it says here that this was May. Oh, this must be really hot then. So yeah. I then put in the, the heat and all that. And then I'm saying, oh, this is January. Oh, that's this is a really nice time, you know. So uh, Gordon must have got killed at a very beautiful on a beautiful day. So so <laughs> I I so I kind of put these two things. So I'm always like logically going. And uh, I also had uh, very good um, luck with the with the Islamic uh, dates. So the yeah. Islamic dates tell me the lunar month. So I could tell whether there was a full moon or a crescent on any particular date when a, when a particular event took place. And I found that that was kind of like that so nice to play with. Like I knew, for example, that that. Uh, uh, that this woman who starts off the book was running and that it was a full moon because it's dated as being the middle of the of the lunar month. So I found things like that, like piecing together uh, things was a kind of like a detective work or it required a bit of thought, uh, you know, putting a puzzle together. Uh, not is not just running away with, you know, with creative ideas. <laughs> That's so uh, lovely that idea that you can know what the night sky was like. The night, maybe a fictional character is looking over the Nile and to the reflections and all of that idea comes through. Yeah, it's, it, that was great, yeah. And I wanted to ask you about the kind of um, idea of culture clashes there, th th which happened quite a lot. Do you think that that has improved or it's still relevant today, that there's the misunderstanding often which can lead to, to uh, you know, greater problems between cultures? Um... That's a it's a good point. I think there's a lot of there's more and more uh, people of color who are Western. Mm -hmm. So so there's more and more people who are, are are part of the West. They are they grew up in the West. They speak uh, perfect English. They 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 themselves would feel uncomfortable elsewhere. So yes, there the, the, there is a group of people like that, um, and and so one doesn't really. You know, you, you you could live your whole life without meeting someone who isn't um, isn't you know conscious of Western values or Western ways of 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 thinking. But at the same time, 
um, now that we are more tolerant, it's interesting to, to go back and to look at the different cultures. It's, it's, it's interesting because the world is, a, is, is, you know, it's a very rich place and there's a lots of uh, richness in, 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 in cultures and languages. And it's kind of a shame to, to lose all that and become all, you know, cookie cutter figures in a way, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, you know, so that's, uh, that's the thing. So, um, I find that also that's uh, that's quite interesting and it's something that that is, is worth sharing with with readers. No, absolutely. And with that in mind, would you continue to write historical novels? Do you think there'll be some more? I'm hoping to go. I, I want to go ahead. I mean, uh, there's there's to have more. Maybe write about colonial Sudan and have a uh, you know Scottish characters going there as, as as being part of 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 life there. That would that's something that does interest me. But we'll we'll see. <laughs> I have to say, I think it's a it's the way I prefer to learn about history is through fiction rather than than fact. I find fact can be a little bit dry and you know dates and times and names and all that whereas something like this it really you really get involved in it as I say you start to care for the characters you really um uh, wish the well some of them well and then you know there's others you get into that whole drama of it which I think you tend not to do with factual stuff that's that's the hundred percent that's a hundred percent true and it's amazing how history is can be so fascinating you know that that you don't it's it's such a good story that you don't really want to to to, to you can't make it up I mean it's just such a good it's such a good story and it's the truth is a good story yeah yeah no that's yeah. right yeah. and yeah before we started uh, recording I just checked that you're still living in Aberdeen you've been there for a while. Um, do you see changes in the city in terms of its art and culture over that time? Oh, yeah, there's been a lot of changes. Um, it, I mean, Aberdeen has always been sort of diverse in its own way, you know, the, the you know, the oil capital of Europe and, and all that. We've got the, um, we had the Word, Word Festival, which uh, Alan Spence set up, mm. and now it's become Wayward. We have the Granite Noir festival and that you know attracts a lot of writers to 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 Aberdeen so there's quite a vibrant uh scene that that's that's happening in in the city yeah yeah I just I, I watched a, a program on BBC uh Alaba the other week which is about the new art street art stuff that's going on in Aberdeen and it yeah. was really exciting to see what's going on and uh and I know they've got a kind of thriving music scene as well and I, I do think Aberdeen you know is really uh, if, if anyone wants to visit somewhere new that they maybe haven't before, there's a lot going on. There is a lot going on, and it's it's a beautiful part of of, of Scotland. It is. We've got beautiful castles. <laughs> We've got Danota Castle. We've got <laughs> really really special places. Yeah. Oh, and the local countryside is absolutely mm. gorgeous. Yeah. Leila, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. I appreciate it so much. Thank you. That was great. <laughs> And we'll be back soon with someone completely different. Cheers.